Ever wondered how the best cricket fielders make it look so easy? Cricket is a game that requires a blend of physical prowess and strategic thinking, and nowhere is this more evident than in the fielding department. Fielding, you see, is not just about catching and throwing. It's an art form that involves strategy, anticipation, and communication. It's about being in the right place at the right time, knowing where the ball is likely to go, and understanding how to react quickly and effectively. It's about working as a team, communicating with your fellow fielders, and making split-second decisions that can change the course of a match. In the world of cricket, a good fielder is worth their weight in gold. Their sharp and effective fielding can turn a potentially dangerous situation into an opportunity for victory. So, are you ready to take your fielding skills to the next level? Stay tuned to learn the strategies that will help you master the art of fielding. The first step to effective fielding is understanding your position. Now in the world of cricket, the field is divided into two main areas, the infield and the outfield. In the infield, close to the batsman, positions like slip, gully, and short leg demand sharp reflexes and the ability to take quick catches. Outfield positions, on the other hand, like deep point or long on, require strong throws and the ability to cover large distances. Then there are specialized positions like the wicket keeper, who stands behind the stumps, or the silly point, who stands daringly close to the batsman. Each of these positions come with their own unique challenges and requirements. Whether you're patrolling the boundary or standing right next to the batsman, every position needs a specific skill set and it's crucial to understand these nuances to enhance your fielding prowess. Remember, every position is important and has a role to play in the team's defense. Before we move on to advanced strategies, you must master the basics. The art of fielding in cricket is rooted in three fundamental techniques, catching, throwing, and stopping the ball. Let's start with catching. Whether it's a high fly or a low ground ball, the key is to keep your eyes on the ball and your hands ready. Next up, throwing. It's not just about strength, but also accuracy. Practice your aim, making sure you can deliver the ball to its target swiftly and accurately. Lastly, stopping the ball. This is a crucial skill that can make or break a game. You've got to be quick on your feet, ready to dive or sprint to prevent the ball from reaching the boundary. Remember, consistency is key. Make these techniques second nature through relentless practice. Be patient with yourself. Progress may be slow, but it's worth every sweat. Mastering these fundamental skills will set the foundation for becoming a great fielder. Now that you've got the basics down, it's time to talk about anticipation and strategy. Anticipation in cricket fielding isn't just about expecting the ball to come your way. It's about reading the batsman's stance, the swing of the bat, the pitch of the ball, and positioning yourself to maximize your advantage. It's about being in the right place at the right time, ready to catch, stop, or throw the ball. Let's break it down. A batsman's stance can tell you a lot. If they're leaning forward, they're likely aiming for a drive. If they're on their back foot, they're probably going for a pull or a cut. Watch their footwork, their grip, the angle of the bat. All these can give you clues for where the ball might go. Next, observe the swing. A full swing might suggest a powerful shot towards the boundary, while a half swing could mean a defensive shot or a quick single. Be ready to move fast and stop the ball from reaching the boundary, or to close in and prevent that single. Now what about your position? This is where strategy comes in. You need to position yourself based on the batsman's stance and swing, and also on the current game situation. If it's a defensive situation, you might want to be closer to the stumps to stop the singles. If it's an attacking situation, you might want to be near the boundary to prevent the fours and sixes. But remember, cricket is a team sport, and fielding is no exception. Communication and teamwork are key. Be aware of your teammates' positions, coordinate with them, cover for each other. A well-coordinated fielding unit can put pressure on the batsman, create opportunities for runouts, and change the course of the game. Anticipation and strategy in fielding are like chess on the cricket field. They require observation, quick thinking, and coordinated action. And just like chess, practice makes perfect. So, keep practicing, keep observing, keep communicating. Anticipating the play 
and making strategic decisions can make the difference between an average fielder and a great one. Lastly, let's cover some tips that will help you become a more effective fielder. First and foremost, stay alert. Fielding isn't just about catching and throwing, it's about being ready for anything that comes your way. Your attention to the game should be unwavering. Secondly, practice regularly. There's no substitute for it. The more you practice, the more you'll hone your skills and reflexes. Thirdly, maintain your physical fitness. Fielding requires agility, speed, and endurance. Regular workouts, agility drills, and endurance training can significantly enhance your fielding abilities. Finally, never stop learning and adapting. Cricket is a dynamic game. The conditions, the opponents, the match scenario, everything keeps changing. Hence, a good fielder is one who can quickly adapt and make the most of the situation. Remember, the key to effective fielding lies in practice, anticipation, and strategy. It's not just about talent, it's about dedication, effort, and a constant desire to improve. So, are you ready to take your fielding to the next level? As we wrap up this insightful journey into the art of fielding, let's revisit the key points we've covered. We started by understanding the importance of effective fielding and the role it plays in the game of cricket. We then delved into the significance of knowing your position and how it impacts your approach on the field. We also explored the basics of fielding, from catching to throwing, underscoring the need for continuous practice to master these essentials. Then we delved deeper into the realm of anticipation and strategy, highlighting how your ability to read the game can give you an edge over your opponents. And finally, we shared some valuable tips to enhance your fielding skills, emphasizing the importance of learning and improving constantly. With these strategies, you are well on your way to becoming a sharp and effective cricket fielder. Until next time, keep practicing and improving.